Okay, it says at a post office. Uh, at a post post office, a uh, parcel that is um, mass slides down the ramp, inclined at some angle uh, from the horizontal, and it gives a coefficient of kinetic friction. All right, so that's a hint that we should be ready to use friction. All right, um, so I guess let's jump right in. I think you have a similar questions to this uh, worked out in the problem set video that ben Benjamin Stahl made for his class um, and I made available to you. Um, but, you know, it, it's good to see the, uh, uh, it's good to see different uh, presentations of the same technique with similar type of problems so that you can see that it really works and that, you know, how different people um, applying, up more or less the same strategy, up, uh, approaches the question in a very similar way. Um, I guess it can kind of, it can look like we lack creativity, but um, on the other hand, hey, it's the most efficient way and there are only a few most efficient ways. All right, so um, what's uh, the, imp the important part of the description here is that there is a ramp that's at an angle. So let me put that angle in there. Um, call that theta. Uh, I'm, I, right now, I'm not drawing a free body diagram. I'm just drawing a diagram. I like to visualize it, make sure I'm not missing anything. Um, so I have a parcel box that is um, amount of mass that's going to be sliding down. All right, um, and i given the angle and oh, it tells me about friction. And it, uh, well, it gave me a, set, a coefficient of friction mu. So I'll be using that. All right, uh, that seems like that's all the information. So let's start. The first step is drawing the free body diagram. So here, uh, it's kind of clear what free body diagram you're drawing. <laughs> you're drawing free body diagram of the mass M. So, uh, once again, this is the step where you should be putting most thought into. You should be, uh, you should be really being most careful not to have missed anything, to have thought of everything, to done have done that. So, um, so as you are feeling like you haven't forgotten anything, let me start. So, um, so I like to draw forces in as they are needed. That helps me draw not draw unnecessary, unnecessary forces. And by continuing to ask, did I draw all the forces? I can convince myself that I didn't forget anything. So uh, the first thing I need is gravity. There's always gravity, unless, um, there's always gravity. There's almost never a situation where there is gravity. So I drew gravity. Then I ask myself, do I have all the forces or do I need additional forces? So I know the direction of acceleration, kinda, and this direction of force is uh, not, this direction of net force is not consistent with the, the direction of acceleration. So there should be additional forces. Well, uh, I need a normal force that's going to be in this direction, kinda. Um, all right, um, that'll give me, that can give me acceleration that's kinda going this way. So that's looking okay so far. And, but I still ask myself the question, did I draw all the forces? And that's why I noted that there's friction here. This time I have to remember to draw friction force. So, oh, so friction is going to be opposing the direction of motion. We know it's a sliding down. So friction force must be going this way. Uh, because it's a tangent to the surface, it'll be perpendicular to the normal force almost by design. Um, all right, then that looks like that's all the forces I have. And um, so I ask myself, yeah, I ask myself the question, did I draw all the forces? And I included friction, looks like everything's there. Good, now I'm done with the step number one. Then the rest of the steps are quite a bit mechanical. We define coordinate axis 
along the direction of ex acceleration uh, that makes things easier in step number four. So let me define my axis this way. That's y is along the n direction, and this is my x. I'm not drawing it right. Oops. Um, so, well, let me kind of hijack this direction. So this is y and what used to be labeled a, let me, oh, wait. Uh, let me label that x. All right, so that's my axis and it's defined in a way so that it's going along the direction of acceleration. Um, then step number three, break up forces into components. So this uh, axis also happens to be nice with step number three because the normal force and friction are already along the direction of y and x axis. So the only uh, force I need to worry about breaking up into components is the gravity. And, and this is the part that takes, takes a little bit of work of geometry because the angle that you're given here is this angle here, theta. And um, after staring at it for a while, you might be able to locate the theta here. And this is the step I would go through. I would start by recognizing that this angle here um, is part of this triangle here, um, which would be a right triangle, which makes this angle 90 degrees minus theta. But this angle is part of this right triangle here. So that makes it this angle here 90 degrees minus 90 degrees minus theta, and that works out to be theta. Uh, you see this situation quite a bit, so uh, it might, I hope it doesn't take you too long before uh, you are able to locate this angle theta um, pretty quickly from the given angle theta here. So once you have located theta, then uh, you are ready to write down the component. The opposite side is, has the magnet or uh, length mg sine theta and the adjacent side has the mag uh, length mg cosine theta. So, all right. Um, with that in, I have all the information necessary to do step number four without really too much thinking. All I'm doing at this point with step number four is just uh, copying the information that already exists in the diagram into equation. So once again, I'm writing down the Newton's second law equation, net force along the x direction, and the net force along the y direction. Net force along the x direction, all right, let's see which forces are along the x direction. Ah, this time it's a little more interesting. I have mg sine theta, the component of gravity along the x direction, and I have friction. So let's write that down. So um, setting the sliding down direction as positive, I have mg sine theta minus friction force is equal to mass times acceleration. The block, uh, the parcel is accelerating in that direction. And along the y direction, uh, we have two forces, the normal force and mg cosine theta. I hope you know this is something that's uh, interesting, n minus mg cosine theta. The first is that uh, normal force is not going to be mg. It's going to be a fraction of mg um, because these two will be uh, adding up to zero. And the second thing is, um, so I think uh, if we were doing this question in the frictionless version, uh, this uh, y component is something that you might have just ignored, uh, saying cooling is something um, uninteresting, and that was true before you had a friction. Once you have friction, then you kind of need a normal force. So now we won't be ignoring this, we'll be working through here. So um, this is the kind of end of the standard strategy 
this is where you should stop it and check if you have the same number of equations as unknowns. So let's count our unknowns. We have m known, g known, theta known, friction force. Um, I don't see friction force given in Newton's, so this is not known. Acceleration, we are looking for it, so that's all, of course not known. <laughs> Okay, all right, two equations, uh, I mean, sorry, one equation, two unknowns, that doesn't look good. Let's look at the second equation. I have normal force, it's technically not known until we solve for it, a minus mg cosine theta. So I have three unknowns and only two equations, and that means I don't have enough information, um, and hopefully it doesn't take you too long of a staring to see that I am given coefficient of kinetic friction and how am I using that information? And as you're thinking about it and maybe even looking it up in the textbook, you should find this formula for kinetic friction. Kinetic friction is equal to normal force, um, is equal to, it's usually written coefficient first, coefficient of friction times the normal force. One thing to be careful here, when you are dealing with a static friction, it gets a little bit more complicated. But um, this is kinetic, so it's easier. So that's my third equation. And I think I'm done here because this third equation didn't introduce any unknowns, so or introduce any new unknowns. So I have three equations and three unknowns. This is a solvable. So, um, Let's solve it. That's, I guess, kind of what we are doing. <laughs> so, all right. Um, so, um, you can go any uh, number of ways. Just the one thing to watch out for here, because the question is asking for acceleration. Acceleration is the quantity you want, which means you leave it to the very end to solve. You don't solve for acceleration right now because right now you don't have tools to solve for acceleration. So, all right, um, so with that in mind, I do have one, um, well, I do have one unknown already solved for in terms of other quantities. So let me just plug that in and see what I get. So, from one and three, I get mg sine theta minus um, f, which is mu n. Oh, I guess the first one I didn't write fk, but it, we understood it was the same friction force, <laughs> is equal to mass times acceleration. All right, um, so we have one equation, two unknowns, so we still have some way to go. Uh, fortunately, equation two has the normal force. Uh, in terms of other things, I think they are all known. So let me solve that for normal force. When I solve that for normal force, I get normal force is equal to mg cosine theta. Now I can use a substitution again, plug this into this equation here, then I get mg sine theta minus mu, <laughs> don't forget that, mg cosine theta is equal to mass times acceleration. All right, oh, so even though the question gave us the mass of the box, I guess we didn't need it, so let me just cancel that all out of all three equations. Uh, once I do that, I guess it is solved for, solved for acceleration already. So let me just write that down, the right hand side, acceleration first. Acceleration is equal to, and you know, if I want, I can actually factor out g. So let me do that. g times, and now I have this numerical parameter, sine theta minus mu cosine theta. All right, I think that's it. Uh, from this point on, it's a matter of plugging in the given numerical values of theta 
and of uh, uh, coefficient of, of friction uh, 0 0.03. Um, all right, um, I guess uh, part B, let me just leave that for you. As the hint says, this is just a kinematics question. Once you find the acceleration in part A and you confirm with the myop method that is correct, then um, you should be able to, I guess, it, so I have acceleration and displacement. I think I can use a V squared formula. So I'll have you use V squared formula to do that.